Hey, it's Dave. And Dan. Hey, welcome to another episode of Hooked on Headwaters. For today's video, we are going to discuss punching. Dan and I had the opportunity to get out there, do a little punching. It was a lot of fun. We caught some fish and we got some good footage on the, on the fishing. So for today's video, Dan's going to cover how we rigged up, how to fish it, and then we'll jump over to the actual on the water footage. So it's going to be pretty neat. Before I turn it over to Dan, I have a special announcement. We have a contest. So we're going to be giving away five American Baitworks tackle packs. Pretty cool, huh? And the drawing will be on December 21st. That's Wednesday. So here's what you have to do. I've, I will be embedding um, letters in this video. Okay, letters make up this word. So it's kind of a word search kind of stuff. Um, when you figure out what that word is, you need to comment below in the comment section. Write the input the word, your name, and your location. Now you, you, you need to be a subscriber in order to participate. So again, look for the words. They'll be embedded throughout this video. The letters, I'm sorry. Figure out what that word is. And comment below in the comment section the word your name and your location and submit that and we'll have a drawing for up to five people going to win and it's going to be an American Bait Works package um, lure package so we appreciate uh, American Bait Works they are sponsoring this so thumbs up to American Bait Works so I'm going to turn it over to Captain Dan okay guys so as Dave was saying we uh, we did some punching in this video um, you're going to see some of the uh, the ways we we were doing it when we were on the water. So just kind of a, a bit of a rig up here for you. Um, I run 65 pound Cortland braid. It's uh, called Silent Flip. It's a braid specially designed yeah. for for punching. Um, a lot of you guys that uh, have punched before in thick vegetation, you'll hear a sawing kind of sound yeah. when your when your bait is running over mm -hmm. the uh, the the vegetation. This is very quiet. It's a 16 carrier braid. It's very quiet, so you don't get that sawing motion. It actually works. I, I use their 50. They've got 50 and 65. I throw the frogs on their 50, okay. and it, it casts like a dream. So anyway, 50, uh, 65 pound Cortland Silent Flip. The reason I'm saying Cortland is I'm on their guide program, and they, and they have good, really good braid yeah, products. This thing is really, really slick. Yeah, uh, yeah, real slick stuff. So what I have here. If I get it untangled, this is a four aught trocar straight shank hook. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah. Let me hold it right. It's go. a straight shank. It's a flipping hook. Yep. We've got a one ounce tungsten weight with a bobber stopper. So I was fishing a one ounce. Dave was fishing an ounce and a half. And I'll get to that little rig up there. So if you'll notice, the hook doesn't seem to be hanging straight down. I'm sure if you guys have heard of baits being the hooks being snelled so basically you run the line through the eye of the hook from this side and then you, you're basically tying around the shank we may do a snelling video at some point yeah. in the future uh, if you need one right away you can find it on youtube and then of course you put your bobber stopper on wait and then you you snell your hook now the other uh, hook that we use and i like both um, this happens to be a uh, three aught extra wide gap Gamagatsu Superline hook with an ounce and a half weight with a bobber stopper. Um, I'll use a three three aught or a four aught depending on the size of my bait. Make sure that you buy a Superline hook because if you don't, mm -hmm. you'll bend them. Um, again, 65 pound Cortland Silent Flip braid. So for the lures they were using. We used a couple different ones. We started off on some crawls, right? And uh, we did okay with that. Uh, then we we switched up to the net bait dagger, and we caught quite a few fish on that. We did. Um, we had we caught some on this. This is the uh, black shadow. Uh, the one we had the other day was uh, plum magic. It's a nice color. That worked. <laughs> yeah, that worked really good. Yeah. So for this. It's, pretty straightforward guys you're just gonna run your hook down into your bait about to the bend there you go. all the way up past the eye of the hook you want to cover the I always cover the eye of my hook 
keeps it from sliding down. And I think it works better. You just rig it just like that. I like to take my bobber stopper, slide down to the to the weight. Um, one thing about a bobber stopper, guys, I believe that they are necessary. Back in the olden days, we used toothpicks and jammed it in the back of the weight. It's a real <laughs> yeah. pain in the butt because a lot of times, once you jam it in and you break it off, and you couldn't get it out. You know, I had pieces of wire and I'd try to push toothpicks out. Yep. These bobber yep. stoppers work really good. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers of them. You can buy them cheap. This happens to be six cents bobber stoppers. It's just a big bobber stopper. Okay, guys, so about the bobber stopper, I believe this is a necessary part of what we're doing. Um, back the years ago, we used to use toothpicks, yeah. and they made rubber little things you could stick in the back and you'd cut them off. The problem with those is once it's inside the weight, it's very, very difficult to get them out. So a bobber stopper, they're very inexpensive. I highly recommend them. I don't I don't punch without it. Okay, so what I, the reason I use that, I'm gonna slide this bobber stopper up the line so it's out of the way. When you flip your bait or pitch your bait in, into this uh, vegetation, you're gonna see we're gonna be fishing in the vegetation, not outside of it. We're gonna be back in really thick stuff. A lot of times your bait will get hung up on the top of the mat mm -hmm. and your weight sinks. So then you're lifting and lowering your bait, what you're thinking is your bait, but it's just your weight. So it's completely ineffective. So with the bobber stopper, it eliminates that problem. So when you drop it in, the, it goes down as one unit and that's what you want. And that's to me is a must, a must have. Um, so from there, uh, let's talk about the other one. So I was using uh, also, we caught some, you'll see on the video, on the Netbait Bee Bug. And let me, this, are, it's, this is a longer name, it's the, the Green Pumpkin Texas Red Swirl. Pretty I'll, cool color. I'll put the uh, information down below. Yeah. So we were using this, we caught some decent fish on this. So again, well, this is the uh, 3 aught extra wide gap, super line hook. Same, same deal, just like you'd rig your worms on a wide, on a uh, offset hook. Slide it up. Again, I always cover the eye of the hook. This hook is not snelt. Um, I've caught many, many, many fish on this this uh, rig here. I always make sure I skin hook the bait. I go, let me show you guys that. So I measure where the hook's going to go through on the bait. And I go, you can see this part of the hook is, is basically vertical and flat there. So I go straight through the bait like that, now I have this, the hook's hanging out. All right, so I lift my bait up. Oops. <laughs> I lift the bait up and I lift and push forward and back and it hides it hides the point of the hook. I'm slide my bobber stopper down and that's the uh, bee bug with an ounce and a half tungsten and a bobber stopper. And you'll see in the video, we caught them on this and the dagger. Right. And, and uh, Again, as I was saying just a moment ago, make sure that you're fishing back in the stuff. Dave and I discussed this on the water. Yeah. A lot of times, pitching to the edge, you can catch them, but in my opinion, that means the fish that are under the mat have to swim out to get it. What I'm trying to do by putting it in the mat, back in the vegetation, I'm trying to put drop it in his living room where he's hanging out so he doesn't have to move. All he's got to do is just open his mouth and he's got it. Um, Something you'll find most of your bites in it will come a lot of times on the initial drop. We've had some of that happen the other day, dropping in and yep, boom, boom, he's there. Yep. Um, watching the video and kind of see what I'm doing there. Um, when I pitch my bait in or I flip my bait in, um, I'll try to demonstrate here a little bit if I don't have too much. Uh, well, while he's getting ready, Dan had to keep reminding me because I was pitching to the edge he said dave you got to be in it you got to be in it so of course i'm i'm looking to learn and learn from the expert here and dan's a great teacher by the way very patient even with someone like me Tell so, him. <laughs> thanks dan <laughs> so you got to be in the stuff yeah so think about it guys if if i pitch to the edge and i know you can't see where the bait's going and you can this happened last video that i was all <laughs> discombobulated okay so when you pitch it in if you're on the outside edge of the the mat it's the bait as you lift and lower it's going to work its way back to the boat if you drop it into the vegetation 
the bait works vertically up and down and that's where you want to be that's where the mm -hmm. fish are going to be so when you drop it in there now when i i drop it in a hole i don't just go slack line because what will happen you won't feel the fish so when it hits the whether i'm flipping or i'm pitching i follow the bait down with the rod tip on a on a taunt line i I let it mm. fall quickly, yep. Yep. but I let it. I follow it down as it sinks. <clears throat> the reason I do that is because where you're then in a position to feel the bait, <clears throat> and then you're gonna if you have a bite, nice solid hook set and keep him coming. Don't give him anything back. This is a kind of a, I don't know a fisticuffs kind of yeah, yeah, technique. Yeah. It, it's uh, you're wrenching them out of some really thick stuff, and a lot of times, and I know this from experience, because I've lost a lot of fish, especially in our areas with cattails. Mm -hmm cattails with mats if you hook a fish and you don't keep Oof. them coming they'll dive and they'll yep. they'll swim past the cattail so the line's got him here and he just spins right around it and it acts as a d hooker mm -hmm. and i've lost mm -hmm. countless fish doing that so when you hit him you've got to just keep keep him coming now you don't want to do this technique with a medium action rod you yeah. need a stout rod i i fish a seven six uh, medium heavy to heavy rod and uh, I'm looking at the halo the 711 yeah, they have a heavy and an extra heavy yeah. and remember guys that's part of American Bait Works uh, family mm -hmm. you can buy the halo rods and get 15% off using the the headwaters 15 headwaters 15 uh, code. code and yeah. please use I know there's other codes out there you get 15% but please support the channel support us mm -hmm. by using our code doesn't make a difference. You get to see that the fifteen percent off. Not only the uh, rods, but all their all their, the their entire yeah. line: lures, tackle, mm -hmm. uh, everything. So uh, yeah. it's a good, uh, good yeah, little discount. It helps yeah. Dave know where stuff's coming from and what's yeah, effective for sure. So, uh, but I am looking at the uh, the Halo uh, HFX. They have it in a Seven Eleven. They have two. They have a mm -hmm. heavy and an extra heavy. And I want to fish both. I would think the extra heavy would probably be better for your ounce and a half to up to two, two and a quarter ounce weight. And the heavy would be better for anywhere from three quarter to ounce and a half. So check that out because I've been looking online. I'm probably going to buy one myself. Um, so a heavy rod. Uh, you want a longer rod so you have more distance as you're, you're pitching your bait or flipping your bait. And uh, when, when you hit the fish, remember, keep them coming. Don't give them anything back because um, he'll wrap you up it'll come off that's kind of the main deal with that um, what to look for you'll see it in the video now not all mats are the same sometimes they'll be uh, they'll be water hyacinth right in in just uh, hydrilla and those are great places um, there'll be uh, water hyacinths or water lettuce uh, you'll see some of this or some of the floating islands that we've talked about several times that are hung up on the bottom and that's where the fish are going to be so you can kind of see from the video the, the kind of vegetation we're looking for. Yeah, and be ready because you're going to be hauling back the fish plus grass, grass, yep. the salad. I mean, yep, tons of it. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, guys, you also you don't have to find floating matted vegetation. That's what I like, but I'll use the same technique in uh, just hydrilla, like clumps of hydrilla. There's mm -hmm. a lot of edges mm -hmm. edges of hydrilla on deep water. You can go and pitch and flip. The hydrilla edges and you can do really really well with that too. yeah i fish with a uh, buddy ozzy if you're watching fishing with buddy ozzy and he was he loved pitching those edges of the hydrilla yeah. that was his I thing some he really good fish of, doing that bunch of fish doing and not just headwaters that. you know yeah yeah oh, okeechobee yeah, yeah. garcia yeah. Mm -hmm. any lake in florida that has grass is is a place you can pitch and flip yep yeah yep. So. so there you have it great great um great little lesson i learned a lot and I'm looking forward to getting out uh, again and we'll have a video of that uh, that trip as well because it was, it was a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. uh, just working your way around and pitching and all of a sudden, boom, boom. Yep. And uh, <laughs> missed, I, I, missed, I missed a few. Yeah. Um, I got wrapped, as Dan said. Um, I did have one. There was one episode where he, he actually came out. He chased it yep. out, remember? Yep. And uh, I'm not sure if we got that on video. I, I don't did. know. I, I know that we got uh, the fish that I lost on video. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> that was a big one. The, the three, that was a big one. We had three decent quality fish. They weren't giants, but they were four or five pounders that came off next to the boat. 
uh, what we found the other day is we I'd set the hook or he'd set the hook and the fish had to swam out from under them. Yeah. Usually they'll stay in there with these right. fish they grabbed and, and swam out. Anyway, okay. you'll see in the video my mess ups and my errors. Yeah. So I'm, we're going to go to the on the water footage. It's really good, uh, quite entertaining. Got a couple of fish. Watch Dan's technique. Don't watch my technique. <laughs> watch Dan's technique. That's mostly him. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, get a whole lot better and improve. And uh, next time you come out to the lake, try that pitching technique. Okay. So off to the video we go. Keep him in the water. How deep you ate that thing. Man, look at that. Whoa, down, this road. down in there. <laughs> he liked it. He liked it a lot. Very cool. Let's bring this hook out here. Too much sun? Yeah. yeah. Nice, about nice fish. A little football. Yeah. Very oh. cool. Beautiful colors. Look at the colors on. Yeah, he's pretty real dark. Alright, let's let him go. That's a nice one. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Come here, you. Good fish. Look at go. Woo! Three pounder. Nice. Look just right. At least that. Check out that dagger. Nice. Plum magic dagger. Hooked him on the dagger. How about that? That's a nice fish right there, fellas. Yes, sirree. Look at that. Beautiful. Very cool. Very cool. Nicely done, Captain Dan. Yes, sir. All right. Let's get him back in the pool. That'll do, thank you. In the face. <laughs> it's like in your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shower. Nice fish. Baby, he bit it and came back. That's a little pocket bass. You know, that's a pocket bass. A lot of the places they'd have tournaments we go and did you see that? Yeah. He had it and he swam out. Oh, oh nice size one. Yeah. Get a picture of that. Oh man. Shouldn't break. You want a picture of it, you said? 
Yeah. 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 That's pretty nice one. I'm caught up in this. Oh, I will. Yeah. Little tiny one. All right. There you go. Punching. Punching. Biggest one so far. Right. Where'd you get that one on, Dave? Right on this. It's cool. Yeah. It's a little it's crooked a, there. Yeah. It's How about that? Put them back in the pool. Come, buddy. Go. All right. Another one right out of the same hole. Sorry, little dude. Same hole. That one was sitting on the bottom when he bit it. Huh. Like I got hopped it a couple times and that one sunk back to the bottom and bam. So they're they're moving to get it probably. Oh, okay. Like they're swimming from one location, they see it and right. swim to that location. They say, oh, that looks tasty. Something's swimming over there. So it tells me the fish are pretty aggressive. That's like four fish we caught out of that spot. Like literally the same pitch. Yeah. That one right there from earlier and then now too. Nice one. He was right oh, under the mat. I mean, he was, his back was probably touching the bottom of the mat. Nice little fish. I'm gonna go in the water. You wanna go from the other side? You want the sun shining on him? That's good. You get that one on? I'm on the uh, Plum Magic Dagger. Okay. The net bait dagger. Yeah. There fishing you go. A, a big one ounce, well, not super big, but we're fishing a one ounce weight with a bobber stopper and a snow trocar four aught. Flip it up. If I can hold it right for you. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> Such a mess. <laughs> I ain't never did this before. <laughs> well, let's get them in the water. In the face. Look at this. <laughs> All right. Another one. The mouth full bite is definitely on. It's a good call. Give me back my hook, dude. Good little fish there. Again on that. Look how dark his back Pretty is. Cool. Yeah. Almost black. Yeah. Ooh. Back under there. Yep. I think they're like in this, uh, this dagger, guys, it's plum magic, and it's a, the water's kind of dark in here, but really clear. Yeah. I think they might be liking this brighter, uh, blue fleck in it, because we were fishing June bug, and we were getting some bites, we switched right. to the dagger, and 
we started picking up on the bites. Yep. That's cool. That's what's left. <laughs> you have your camera going? Mm hmm. Alright. Good. Little dude. Boy, they're dark under there. It's a healthy fish. That's where I caught the other one. Yeah. But then remember, I caught one. See where this one's sitting out here? Yep. Right beyond that, there's a hole there. So I did that again and let it sit. Like work it up and down and let it sit on the Just bottom. Let it sit on the bottom. Yeah. I, mean, I work it up and down. I'm just saying, just right. hop it up and down. See how when you, it worked itself out? It does. Yeah. So what do you do not keep Get it inside. Oh. There he is. <laughs> He followed that out. <laughs> That's cool. He said, I want that. Come on, there, boo. Hey, stop that. There you go. Cool. Very cool. Fishy. Thanks. Another one. You're where you're supposed to be, little dude. Thank you very much. But tell your mama. All right, folks, we are back. I hope you enjoyed the footage. We have fun doing it. We have fun fishing it. I hope you picked up a few things here and there and make your to make your next punching um, outing a much better one. Before we close things out, I want to remind you of the uh, American Bait Works uh, coupon code, Headwaters15. Purchase anything on their website, AmericanBaitWorks.com, and uh, you get that, you'll get the discount. Again, across all their products, Halo Rods, and if you pick up a couple of those daggers, which we highly recommend, see, you'll see in the video, all the fish we caught, as well as the fish we caught were on the daggers. Daggers and the bee bug. Yep. And the bee bug, yep. Um, I want to thank the Davis House Inn. They are a um, show um, partner, sponsor. Um, we highly recommend a stay there. Many of you have already stayed there. Mm -hmm. A wonderful, beautiful place to stay in Sebastian, right on the Indian River. Um, it's about 20, 25 minutes yeah. to the, to the uh, headwaters boat ramp. Um, they are efficiency type of rooms. Um, Kyle will take care of you. They go all their way to make sure your stay there is the best stay. Uh, within walking distance of a lot of restaurants, great, great eateries, and lots to do in the, the, the Sebastian uh, downtown area. Yep. And for a little more rustic setting, we recommend the Blue Cypress Lakeside Cabin. Um, Jim and Tammy there, well, it's just wonderful host. Um, it's on, right on Blue Cypress Lakes. A little more laid back type of setting. Blue Cypress is a beautiful, beautiful lake. I would put it on places to visit, places to stay mm -hmm. if you're in this area. Um, the lake has has lots of mm -hmm. cypress trees yeah. growing in it. And it's not just looking at the lake. You're you actually yeah. idle your boat in and tie them to yep. the dock. <laughs> right. <laughs> out the back door of your room. Yeah. It's really you can barbecue there. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. porch back there. Yeah, it's cool. Very you nice. Can hang out, enjoy a drink, grill Drill put some something steaks, on the yeah. grill um, great place to stay another place we highly recommend both places do offer a discount if you mention hooked on headwaters mm -hmm. and with that said we are uh, closing out um, Dan anything else no I think we're good I think I've talked enough all right so um, you want to book a trip with Captain Dan or Captain Jerry mm -hmm. will be joining us in uh, just a few days 
Uh, make sure their information is down below. Schedule early. It's getting into that time yes, where busy. a lot of folks are coming down, mm -hmm. a lot of fishing trips. So book with them. Highly recommend both of these guys. Um, they are great local guys. Um, family friendly. I think that's really, really important. Um, you're not going to be embarrassed you're, if you bring a guest, your family, your girlfriend. By these guys, they um, they um, don't uh, do the stuff, quote, air quote, <laughs> <laughs> that we don't like to see or hear yeah. from, in my experience, from many other um, uh, from other guides. Yeah, so, I appreciate uh, that. Yep. Yeah. And don't forget, it, Dave uh, does kayaking trips as well. Salt water and fresh water. And fresh water. And I've got an you announcement. Gotta stick your, you got to put your your black drum that you caught last week. Yeah, so a little insight. I haven't put together a video yet from a, kayak, a kayaking venture. I went out in salt water and I came across a school of monster black drum. They're this big. is a once in a lifetime. This is epic, folks. You see, if you, I'll, I'll I'll talk yeah, about yeah, it next. At least next maybe week. you stick a photo in there. It is. Yeah, I'll stick, I'll stick a picture of one of them. I'm not exaggerating. Red drum, about this long. The, a black drum, sorry. This this long, this wide, massive. It was a school of over a hundred fish. My guess. It's a again epic, once in a lifetime thing. It's a really cool. really cool. So if you like to book a trip. Um, for bass or salt water, talk to me, Living Waters Kayaking. I'll put my information down. And we just upgraded, or I'm upgrading our kayak fleets to motorized. So I'm in, I invested in kayaks that have integrated uh, trolling motors. Um, this kind That's of, cool. it just takes you to the next level. And again, fishing from the kayak is just a different experience. Mm -hmm. I call it eyeball to eyeball fishing. And um, it's just that uh, being on the water at that level, um, it's just so cool. Something yeah. that I just love to do. Well, anyway, well, that's it for uh, this week, for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and God bless you all. Till the next one. See you guys. Bye. Oh, oh. oh. Lost him, Dan. Good fish. Oh. Right at the well, we got the nice jump. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice one. Wow. Good fish, Dan. <laughs> Next time I'm just going to boat flip it. No more video of that side. I'm going to boat flip it. That's okay. Better to have loved and lost and never loved at all.